is she there, though? She's not there. Go look. I don't think she's there.
she's going to come up on stage, so I was going to set those after she introduces you guys. She told me she was introducing us. Asked her again. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello. We're going to be starting the program in five minutes. So if everybody could get seated or standing or whatever you're doing, that would be great. We're uh, just waiting for a couple people to get in. And anybody who's going to be speaking tonight, if you could be at the front tables, that would be great. I'll be back in two minutes. Can everybody please find their places? We're going to start the program in one minute. So if everybody could just, I know that everybody wants to see each other. We're going to have after the program about a half an hour where people can still kibitz. If everybody could just quiet down, we have a very special opening. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we, we have one mic on and one not on. So let's let it go. My mic is on. Okay, it is now. Both for work, it's all the time, every day. Pension justice, she led the way. Oh, and she left behind work to be done. Let's keep it going, have some fun. She was a pension right, zero to right. Every day, hero for life. She was a pension right. Hero so bright, every day, hero for life. She was a pension right, hero for life. Every day, hero so bright. She was a pension right, hero so bright. Every day, every way.
Oof. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much to select. Thank you so much to Celeste Crenshaw, Deb Tidwell, and the Glenn Pearson Trio for that beautiful song. You're in for a treat tonight because you're going to be hearing more of that song a little bit later. So sit tight or stand tight, whatever you're doing. As most of you know, I'm Karen Friedman, and I am so happy to see all of you. Thank you for coming and supporting us. If I start crying, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like a mirage seeing so many friends and colleagues in one room, in person, not on Zoom. It's truly magical. Everything about this event is perfect. The company, the food, the music, this spectacular museum, which I hope you all had time to tour. There's only one thing missing, and that's Karen Ferguson. But given Karen's tendency for always being late for so many meetings over her lifetime, as almost everybody has experienced, there's a part of me that still expects her to run through that door at any moment with her hair flying, smiling that magnificent smile in that trade, and then giggling in that trademark Ferguson way, putting everyone at ease. I only wish. Over the past decade, Karen stood together at these events to present Retirement Income Superhero Awards to an impressive array of individuals who contributed greatly to the retirement security of workers and retirees. Well, this year, we're honoring Karen as our everyday hero and our ultimate and forever retirement income superhero. But this event is not just about Karen because as you all know, she was very modest and she would have hated the attention, all of it. It's about the Pension Rights Center. We worked together for decades as sidekicks, as friends and colleagues. And now Karen Ferguson is in all of our DNA. We learned from her, we grew with her, and together we helped build PRC into a champion for retirement security. And together with our great staff, consultants, fellows, board of directors, and all of you, we remain true to Karen's vision. PRC will always be the voice of consumers in Congress, regulatory agencies, and in the media. We will address key inequities and shortcomings in the current retirement system, especially for women and people of color. Our legal program, working with the pension counseling projects and all over the country, and Anne is here tonight, will ensure that people get the benefits they earned. And we will work to fulfill Karen's long time and long term dream to expand coverage for everybody and create a secure and adequate retirement system on top of a strengthened social security system. Can I hear a retirement roar of approval? So when I look out at the audience tonight, I see people from every facet of PRC's history. Retirees, you'll hear from them later. <laughs> Women, <laughs> women's groups like the National Women's Law Center, business, business groups like ARA and ABC, government leaders, and you'll hear from Ali, pension counseling projects, Hill staff, Kendra's here and Kevin's here and a lot of others, everyone. You are our collaborators, you're our friends, you're our partners, and sometimes some of you are our sparring partners. Tonight's program is a tribute to Karen and all of you. You'll hear from experts and allies who worked with us in the 1980s to increase federal protections for widows and spouses. You'll hear from retirees like Janice Winston and Mary Rich, whose pensions we helped save at Verizon, yay, and the Hospital Center in Orange, yay. Retired truck drivers, spouses and musicians who came here from all over the country, not just to celebrate Karen Ferguson, but also the enactment of the Butch Lewis Emergency Pension Plan Relief Act of 2021. And that act, and that act now is saving hundreds of 
underfunded multi-employer plans and the pensions of millions of workers and retirees. It's a fantastic victory. <clears throat> You'll hear from our business partners who, who are working with us on common ground initiatives and from government officials, policymakers, funders, board members, and a video of Ralph Nader, who couldn't be here tonight. And at the end of this magnificent program, we will raise a champagne toast to Karen, and then you're going to hear something truly amazing. Remember the Everyday Hero song we started with? <clears throat> well, that was a variation of a song written for Karen Ferguson and PRC by musicians whose pensions we helped save. The song was recorded, written, and produced in both LA and Nashville by Ellis Hall, who plays with Tower of Power, among others, and Dennis Dreeth, who flew in from LA for this event. He's a composer who has performed with such notables as Barbara Streisand, as well as 13 other top-notch musicians who recorded in stud studios for days and weeks, and they've played with just about everybody from George Harrison, Prince, Taylor Swift, Madonna, and Quincy Jones. Not bad. The song was just finished in the studio within the past few days, and it's airing publicly tonight for the first time with a slideshow at the end of the program. You won't want to miss it. I again want to thank you all for coming. I want to thank particularly our sponsors and funders. And I also want to give a special thank you to our staff, particularly Kyle Garrett and Kate Pixley, who helped put this whole event together. <clears throat> and, and also, also David Brandolph and, and, um, and, and Nancy and Deb and all of the board members and, and of course Norman Stein who who um, has helped with everything. Woo! Ooh, 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 ooh. Um, so um, now it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you the one and only Andrew Ferguson, Karen's son, someone I've known since he was six years old, and now he's a professor at the Washington College of Law at American University, which ages me. <clears throat> Andrew. <laughs> I'm, I'm dragging uh, my family up here, my wife Alyssa, my son Cole, my daughter Alexa. Uh, before I begin, I want to just say thank you to Karen Friedman and to Kyle and all the Pension Rights Center staff, to Norma and the board. You do not know how much work went into this uh, event, not just the logistics, but the emotional energy of trying to capture a life uh, in this way. And I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart how much this means. And I can give them all a round of applause. You know, we never really had a memorial service for my mom, partially because that was what my mom would want, partially because of uh, COVID, and partially because it never would have been right without all of you. This was her group, the people who were fellow travelers in a battle for retirement justice and retirement security over uh, years. And it wouldn't have made sense if we didn't have all of you here. So I want to thank you all for being here. It really, really means a lot. Thank you to you. <laughs> you know, my mom really had two kids, me and the Pension Rights Center. And we, we kind of grew up together. We're about the same age. I mean, I was the oldest with all that gets me, right, Cole? It gets a little bit more. Uh, but uh, we were lucky because we had a fabulous mom. A mom who was loving, a mom who was caring, a mom who uh, did everything that she could to sort of build us up, to let us survive and thrive and, and do amazingly. And, and I, I look at the Pension Rights Center, I've watched it from you know, afar and a part of the family and recognize just how much it was a tribute to my mom's love uh, for us, both of us, me and my sibling, the PRC. <laughs> Um, most of you know the, the facts about my mom, right? Sort of the base level facts. She's one of a few women uh, to graduate from her class at Harvard Law School when there weren't women at Harvard Law School. She was the first uh, or the, the only woman hired at the law firm in Chicago where she was, only the second woman ever hired. She came back to DC to sort of create this uh, world of public interest law. I'm a law professor now, and all my students are coming to law school, not all, but some are coming to law school, more need to, of course, uh, to come to be public interest lawyers, which didn't exist 
uh, except for this, the generation who helped create it and made it into something real. Uh, and it was her and Ralph and all the other people in this room who changed what we understand of how law can help ordinary people, how law can fight the power and the, 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 the powerful and do something good for ordinary people and workers. And she did that. You know, she fought every battle in retirement security and ERISA and pension law over 40 years. She won the Wonder Woman Award. She's a great grandmother to uh, my kids and a great mother-in-law to Alyssa. Uh, but I want to talk about just two quick facts that you don't really know about. It wouldn't make it into her bio. Uh, the first fact, fact number one, is that every weekday, Monday through Friday, she walked home from the office around 10, 30, 11 with my father both of them who were leaving work at that time. Now, my mom didn't actually get to the pension rights until around five, which says something about her management style, that she was a better manager by not being there, so I think we'll be okay. But, uh, but she worked all day. So she was working all day, and then she'd work all night, and they would have these walks home where they would talk about the, the issues of pension law, labor law, whatever it would be. And it was a tribute to how meaningful her job was, how much it meant to her that she was willing to spend almost all of her waking hours thinking about improving retirement income for ordinary people who needed help, who needed that legal help. Fact two, even in the last weeks of her life, she was fielding phone calls from all over America for people who needed help with retirement issues. And the people calling had no idea that she was honestly in the last stages of her life. But she would sit with them and talk with them and try to help them, even when there wasn't help to give. Uh, and one of the silver linings of the last year was I would come down and have dinner with her every night. I'd have dinner with my family, and then I'd come down for a second dinner with my mom, and we'd talk about her day. And her day was filled with these phone calls. And I, I sort of asked her, it's like, you know, mom, like, Time is finite, like life is finite. Is this really what you want to do? And she's like, this is what I do. This is who I am. And even if I can't help everyone, I can help the person who called. And I can do my best by, even if it's just listening. And that's kind of who she was all the way through her life, was doing that up to the last moments. Um, all of you who are parents know that like part of what you do when you raise kids is not about the present, it's about the future and knowing that what will happen after you are gone, that those people you raise will, will thrive and do great. And so too with the Pension Rights Center. She built this organization knowing that Karen and the team were gonna do wonderful work and we're gonna continue this mission and this life. And also she knew that it takes a community to raise that family. And so I'm asking you as sort of a, a thing to continue that support for the Pension Rights Center. Continue building this vision out there's a lot of injustice still in the world of retirement insecurity, as you know. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done. And so thank you for being here, and thank you for committing to working with the Pension Rights Center. Oh my God, thank you so much, Andrew, for those gorgeous remarks. I mean, uh, whew, that's amazing. Um, and everything he said was so true. Um, and also I often watched her walk home with your father at night, it's true. Um, anyway, now I'm, I'm very pleased to introduce the wonderful chair of the Pension Rights Center's Board of Directors, Nancy Altman. <laughs> Yeah, let me let me add my thanks for Andrew those very moving comments. I think we should have a, another round of applause for the Ferguson family. As you all know, we're here tonight to remember a truly extraordinary person, honor her life and legacy, and celebrate not only the Pension Rights Center's achievements, but the achievements to come. Those of us who serve on the Center's Board of Directors feel the deep loss of Karen Ferguson, but are excited that going forward, PRC is in the determined, capable, 
and creative hands of Karen Friedman and the fantastic staff. And I'm going to try not to cry, too. <laughs> it's, it's an evening of tears. The monikers of K1 for Karen Ferguson and K2 for Karen Friedman captured so much. The Karens were an impressive partnership. They seemed to finish each other's thoughts and certainly edited each other's words. In fact, we are at um, Planet Word partly as a nod to Karen Ferguson's love of words. She used them, as you all know, brilliantly. She edited with the goal of perfection and generally achieved it. In addition to me, you'll be hearing from my fellow board members, Deb Whitman, and on video, Tom Reeder. Also with us in person are Dan Halperin, Robert Roach, and Regina Jefferson, as well as our recently retired Marion Mudd, who just this week became a super sustainer. <laughs> Una unable to join us in person, um, but equally committed to a powerful future for PRC are Alicia Manel and Ian Lanoff. As everyone knows, Karen was wise, incredibly effective, quick to share credit, even quicker to simply uh, give the credit to others. Um, she was passionate and always kind, gentle, and generous. All of us in this room have stories and insights, and in fact, around the country, have stories and insights about this remarkable person's life and legacy. Every one of you could be here on the dais uh, giving stories and anecdotes and insights about this amazing woman. I hope you had a chance to record your thoughts before the program with a wonderful videographer, Lee Mosley. If you did not, please feel free to record or write a tribute um, whenever you can. All of them will be permanently stored on the center's website. We've had so many wonderful recorded and, and uh, written tributes already. Just this week, we, was, we received one from Senator Elizabeth Warren, who wrote in part, I was proud to work with Karen. I am deeply grateful for her work, which has moved us progressively towards an equitable and secure retirement system. And I look forward to continuing to partner with the Pension Rights Center as we continue her fight. We will now play a recording on the screen of just a few tributes collected in advance on video. So now the video. This past December, we lost a true champion for the rights of pensioners, Karen Ferguson. As president and founder of the PRC, Karen was a tireless advocate for securing workers' hard-earned pensions and played an integral part in making the Butch Lewis Act a reality. Today, we honor Karen's life's work, her tenacity, and the legacy that lives on in all of you. She is so deeply missed, but I thank all of you at the Pension Rights Center for your tireless advocacy on behalf of America's workers and retirees in carrying her torch. Americans have dignity and security because of your advocacy. Thank you all. Karen was inspirational. She was so persuasive and passionate. A Karen was what we called in Washington a unicorn, something that's very rare but highly valued. She never backed down from a fight, and she was unwavering uh, in her support for workers and retirees' pension benefits. Karen was such a visionary. She she always reached for the stars. She looked for the biggest, boldest solutions to the very thorny, complicated problems facing women. He didn't have a lot of bravado around about her, but he quietly and persistently and tenaciously held to an issue with the brains behind it. So he could provide option after option after option that could lead to a compromise as long as it protected pension benefits. Millions of workers owe the fact 
that they're getting what they've been promised, what they worked their lives for, to Karen Ferguson and the Pension Rights Center. Many years ago, when my pension was being cut, I ran into Karen Friedman and eventually was introduced to Karen Ferguson, K-1, and my life was changed forever. It was impossible for anyone to interact with her and not come out a strong supporter and advocate for enabling people to get their pensions, even when it was not easy to do that. Because she was so passionate and determined and, and dedicated to these causes, she provided the technical expertise that was the inspiration for the women's groups uh, dealing with issues, complicated issues, such as widows, survivorship, the Retirement Equity Act, the various tax bills, and of course, uh, the Butch Lewis Act, which was just more recently passed. The Pension Rights Center, Karen and the staff under her leadership, the words that I would describe would be caring, steadfast, and consistent. For decades, she was and I might say remains sort of our moral compass for pension uh, and retirement policy. She was always fighting the good fight. And she was a constant reminder that the world could be a better place. She will be missed, but her legacy lives on in the lives she touched and the work that's being done here at the Pension Rights Center. Good evening, everyone. I'm Deb Whitman, Chief Public Policy Officer at AERP, Pension Rights Center board member, and like so many of the, you in the room, I am a proud pension warrior. I'm so happy to be at this beautiful event um, and watch this moving video that captures so much of Karen Ferguson's legacy. As Senator Harkin noted, Karen always fought the good fight, making the world a better place. And that is the best legacy that any of us could have. I'm supposed to remind you that if you didn't tape a personal video earlier, there will still be opportunities afterwards. Point, point the direction that people should go, Karen. That way. <laughs> Karen was a force of nature and a complete visionary. She will be incredibly missed. But as the song said, there is still a lot of work to be done. Luckily, Karen left her legacy in this organization. And that legacy is very strong. I am a board member and I could not be happier that Karen Friedman is taking the reins and moving the organization forward. With your support, she and the incredible staff at the Pension Rights Council will be carrying the torch and continuing to fight for decades to come. AARP has been a dedicated partner and supporter for the last 40 years on so many initiatives that I couldn't even list them all. We work together on retirees, older workers, and spouses. Recently, we funded a common ground initiative on women and retirement at divorce to address the challenges that women face when they separate from their spouses. We have joined with PRC on legal and legislative battles and appreciate the deep knowledge and the passion that the PRC team always brings. Tonight, I want to thank all of you who have stood with AARP to support the center in this important work, and especially the RRF Foundation for Aging for its genuine and sustaining support, the Administration for Community Living for their ongoing support of the center's legal program and the Pension Counseling and Information Program, which has covered millions of dollars in earned benefits. 
I also want to give a special thanks to the many law firms and attorneys who, that have designated the center as their 2022 recipients of significant Cypre awards, including Keller Roback, Schneider Wallace, Cottrell Konecki, the law offices of Jonathan Fiegenbaum, Cohen Milstein, Matigue Law Firm, James A. Moore, Feinberg, Jackson, Wortham, and Wasco, and Bailey and Glasner. These help continue. Yeah, let's give a thanks to that. I also want to thank the many other law firms and others of you that have supported the foundation for years to come. As Andrew said, the battle for retirement justice is not over. And none of this would exist without the generous donations and sponsorships. And if you haven't sponsored, you still have time. <laughs> so on that note, as you're pulling out your checkbooks, we have a lovely video to celebrate all of our sponsors. Thank you. Song. We have a lovely song. <laughs> Thank you. Two on, one off. Celeste, are you on? Yes, I am. Uh, I think I'm on. <laughs> the only nonprofit except for maybe theater lab that does songs at their all their uh, uh, events and, and and I love every minute of it um, I also want to just really take this time to say that even though we couldn't put every single sponsor in the song because we would be here till nine o'clock uh, we appreciate every single person and organization that has sponsored us and I appreciate every one of you who has come tonight I just want you to know that so now uh, I want to give a warm welcome for PRC's longtime friend and business partner, Jim Klein, the president of the American Benefits Council. Thank you, Jim. Good evening. Thank you, Karen. Uh, I'm joined here this evening by uh, three of my colleagues, uh, Lynn Dudley, our senior vice president, for Global Retirement Policy, Jill Randolph, our Senior Director for Legislative and Political Affairs, and uh, Diane Howland, 
our uh, Vice President for Legislative Affairs. Um, because we're in the Word Museum, uh, I feel a particular responsibility and a little bit of pressure to find the right words to honor Karen. For those of you who are not familiar with American Benefits Council, uh, we are a business organization. We represent primarily uh, Fortune 500 companies, about 220 of them, plus other large employers, as well as other organizations and businesses that support employer plan sponsors. Uh, so it will come as a su no surprise to anyone in this room that there were relatively few issues of concerning retirement policy on which Karen and I agreed. <laughs> so why am I here? Over more than 35 years of engaging with Karen, um, I never doubted, and I certainly hope that she never doubted, that we were dedicated to the same common goal, en enhancing and expanding retirement security, which of course includes preservation and strengthening of defined benefit pension plans, and also ensuring that retirees receive the benefits that they have earned, hence even our current work uh, trying to address the issue of missing participants. We saw this common shared goal and respected the fact that we simply believed in different pathways to achieve it. Uh, I'm personally grateful to Karen for giving me one of the opportunities for a, a highlight of my career, and that was to nominate her for the Public Service Award of the International, Employee Benefit, uh, International Foundation of Employee Benefit Plans, sort of the premier organization of labor and management dedicated to employee benefits education. And I, I, I did so because she really exemplified the old school way of conducting public policy, something that I, I, I'm sure you concur with me, we hope to recapture. You all know, and um, hopefully more of our public policymakers will come to know and to agree again, that we don't make much progress when we only talk with people with whom we agree. So I think the best way for us to honor Karen on an ongoing basis is to do what she did. Three things, to give others the benefit of the doubt, which enables us to acknowledge that we do have shared goals, to continue respectful dialogue, and to never abandon the quest to find common ground, if not on the current issue in which we're engaged, then on the next one. So I want to thank the Ferguson family, the team at PRC that Karen so ably led in giving us at the American Benefits Council the privilege of participating in this celebration of Karen uh, and to extend our best wishes and the hope that we will continue to work together for the betterment of retirement security. And it now is my pleasure and privilege to be able to introduce another individual who understands the value and supports the importance of finding common ground and being a good listener. Uh, and that is the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Labor, Ali Kaur. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Um, it's a particular honor to be here, um, not just at this event, but I think speaking in this part of the program, because it occurred to me, um, if this were one of the many meetings we had with the Pension Rights Center, this is about the time we would have started the meeting, because this is when um, Karen would have arrived. Um, so it, it, it really, you know, it, it, it's kind of full circle thing that's happening for me. Um, I, you know, for us, the, everybody in this room understands uh, what EVSA is and what we do, um, and that our mission is about the retirement security of America's workers. Um, and so you would think that that means that I've never had Jim Klein's experience of, of disagreeing with Karen. Um, uh, I have. Um, <laughs> she's she's uh, uh, 
was a woman of very, very strongly held opinions. Um, and it, you know, I, I much preferred the times when we had meetings when everybody agreed with each other. That was a very, very pleasant um, experience. Um, I, 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 will, <laughs> I will remember for many years the times we disagreed. But it, it really underscored for me um, the importance of an organization like the Pension Rights Center. Um, many of you have heard me say, I'm not someone who believes that um, government, um, EBSA, the Department of Labor, um, me individually, has all of the right answers to any question. Um, but it is through engagement with the people in this room um, and the multiplicity of viewpoints that I see when I look around the room that we actually come up with good answers. Um, that we come up with solutions like the Butch Lewis um, Act. Um, <clears throat> that the Pension Rights Center played such a critical role in, in, in acting. And I would just say, you know, we have a, a, our version of the Pension Counseling Project, and I think the work that we've been able to do with the Pension Rights Center through our benefit advisor program has really um, been one example of how working together um, we are able to achieve so much for um, the workers and retirees that we all care about. And, and maybe the one thing I'll say in closing is, um, you know, I, I think today, um, and, and pretty frequently since Karen's passing, I've been thinking a lot about um, her legacy. And her legacy is in part the fact that we have people with such diverse viewpoints, um, uh, people who I've never seen agree with each other, um, but we actually are all here in agreement on one thing, which is the legacy that she leaves, the important role that the Pension Rights Center plays in our system. And I just would encourage you to all kind of use this opportunity to think about how you can further her legacy and, and really continue to, to fight this battle because there's, there's unfortunately a lot more that needs to happen on the retirement security front. Thank you. Well, I want to thank Jim. That, those were beautiful remarks. And Ali, um, also, um, I just want to say that, yes, um, the Pension Rights Center, we don't agree with everybody all the time, but we are, uh, we really engage in common ground initiatives. We, as Deb had said, um, our initiative on uh, women in retirement at divorce to solve the quadro pro problem. There's about 20 to 30 people diverse organizations um, that we're working with on that issue, and we welcome a diversity of, of opinions on that. Um, <clears throat> the next video um, means a lot to us and will mean a lot to Andrew and to it would mean a lot to Karen because, um, as most of you know, the Pension Rights Center would not exist if not for Ralph Nader. And um, Karen worked with Ralph in the public interest research group in the early 70s. And Ralph gave Karen a check for $10,000 and told her to start her own organization. And the rest is history. So I now present to you, Ralph Nader. It's hard for people to believe that trillions of dollars in private and public pensions didn't have a single advocacy group in the country, especially in Washington. So the Pension Rights Center was the main advocate year after year, working with unions, retirees, legislators, drafting legislation, advising lawmakers in Congress, and informing the press about a subject of enormous magnitude and impact, retirement savings for tens of millions of people that the media thought was dull. Well, the Pension Rights Center begged to disagree Karen Ferguson really had a perfect civic personality. Uh, she had knowledge, it was accurate. She had passion behind her advocacy. Uh, she was congenial, she never shouted uh, to get her point across, had a good sense of humor, worked very well with people, inspired them. She had patience, she had stamina, she kept up to date, she didn't get discouraged, and didn't get distracted. Those are all the elements of a civic personality. And she also gave people credit. She didn't want to be the center of the limelight at all. And I hope we'll be able to find a knowledgeable biographer to write a biography entitled Karen Ferguson and Her Times to be an inspiration and an instruction 
uh, to the younger generation. So now it's my great pleasure to introduce all my friends from the National United Committee to Protect Pensions, the retirees who worked with us in coalition with allies here. Um, well, Davey's gonna thank you all. <laughs> um, to help pass the Butch Lewis Act, which truly, I said this earlier, but it was one of the greatest accomplishments of the Pension Rights Center and so many of you in this room. And I was so happy that Karen was alive to see the passage and enactment of that law. So I would like to bring up Kenny Stribling, Davy Grubbs, Dana Vargo, and Cindy McDaniel. <laughs> I always have to look out for that guy. Thank you, Karen. My name is Kenneth Stribling. I am president of the National United Committee to Protect Pensions. And I'd like to introduce all, each and every one of these people here who are part of this organization. Our Vice President, Davey Grubbs. Our Call him late for dinner, Bernie Anderson, who's our treasurer, but he's very important to us. We got our director of communications, Madam Secretary Dana Vargo, and of course, the lovely Cynthia McDaniel out of Kansas City. I don't, well, thank you. It is my honor to be standing here, lost for words, after all these other elegant speakers, and I mean, how do you follow this? But I have to thank Karen. You mean so much to us. And our good friend, Norman, who's always available. And I'm telling you folks, we're just not saying this. Norman was available day and night. We could call him any time of the day. Even set your watch, hey Norman, I don't forgot what time it is, but I gotta call you. So. The Ferguson family. They had a lovely mother. I remember my first time that I met her. She encouraged me to speak up because I was quiet. I was scared, like everybody else, like I'm scared now, talking to all these beautiful people in here. But she says, Go ahead, you'll be okay. And I am okay now. So thank you, Pension Rights Center, for all you've done for all the retirees out here who know they have retirement security for the rest of their lives and our future retirees. So without any further delay, I just wanna go ahead and say thank you again to the Pension Rights Center. It'll always be a, always a special place in my heart for you. And you'll always have a special place in my heart. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. David Brown. Hello everybody, uh, David Grubbs. Um, I just stepped up here. I have to follow these people with these perfectly prepared speeches that know exactly what they want to say. That's not me. So I, I do want to tell you that I personally, my family, my friends, we're all benefactors of the Butch Lewis Act. It has saved our lives. And we can't say thank you enough to the people who helped us pass this bill, who helped us get there. Uh, and, and before I start thanking people individually, I want to thank someone who hasn't been thanked properly, I believe. And we talk about Karen Ferguson and, and Karen Ferguson's life. And if you listen to Karen Ferguson's bio, she's a Ivy League graduate from Harvard University with a, with a law degree. She could have written her own life story. She could have been anything she wanted to be, went anywhere she wanted to go. She could have had riches beyond her imagination. But she chose to take her talents and apply them to regular struggling people. 
and we can't say thank you enough to her. And thank you to Andrew and your family for sharing her with us because we know we took her away. It took a lot of, a lot of different entities to, to move Congress. Uh, anyone who's ever worked on the Hill understands nothing moves quickly. Some things never move at all, or at least you don't see them moving. Um, but a lot of, a lot of entities and, and corporations helped us, you know, and, and just a few off the top of my head was the IBT, International Brotherhood of Teamsters. They were there for us. The, the IAM. AARP, UPS, we all had a common end. We didn't necessarily agree on how to get there, but we all wanted to get to the same place, and we all found a way to get there together. And I can't say enough thank yous to those people. But there are other people that no one thinks about, and that's the people in our committee, the American citizens who have never stood up, who have never fought for anything but they were slapped across the face when someone told them they were taking away 70% of their pensions that they had worked for. Those people come alive. Those people learn how to be advocates to our government. They learn how government works. They learn to write letters, to email, to speak in public. And those are our members. And I can't say thank you enough to those people who learned how to make their government work for them. And we give our government all the credit to the people who are in elected offices. We give the credit to our senators and our congressmen. And they cast the votes, but they're very, very, very busy people. They really have a hard time of keeping up with day-to-day -day activities and what's going on. They're totally dependent upon the people who work in their offices. We call them their aides. They're, they're much more than their aides. But there's people who, who went above and beyond to help us. People like Kendrick Isaacson, who's here. Thank you, Kendrick. Kevin McDermott. Kara Getz, I don't know if you're here, I haven't seen you, but thank you, Kara. We could go on and on and on with the people who helped us, but uh, I would like to give them the recognition because it's the people who work behind the scenes, the people behind the doors who make things happen in Congress. Thank you for your time. Enjoy your evening. This is Ms. Dana Vargo. This is the grease that keeps our wheels turning, I promise you. <laughs> There's so many things I could say, but I think the main thing that I wanna tell you is that our pension warriors being, you know, truck drivers and mechanics and warehousemen, I mean, they had no clue what we were getting into, but we didn't have a choice. And thank God that we found pension rights and Karen and Karen to help us with this. And thank God we also had Mike Walden that formed the NUCPP. We had Rita Lewis, who was <laughs> the rock. Um, without, and, and unfortunately, they weren't able to be here tonight because they would want to express their thank you. But, you know, we have so many people to thank, and we are forever grateful. I'm Cynthia McDaniel, and I am with the Missouri Kansas City Committee to Protect Pensions proudly, and a, and a National United Committee, Committee person as well, and I'm very proud of that as well. But I just want to say what a more wonderful world it would be if we were all a Karen Ferguson. If we were all a Karen Ferguson. have a legacy. What she's got is amazing. But she understood when we had our pension fight going on, she understood what it was going to happen to our families and our communities and our churches that we couldn't give money to anymore. There was so many big, big things to think about other than it just was going to happen to her pensioners. She was the one that got us going. She understood that we could be the activists 
that she knew we could be. And we stepped up to be that, and we were proud of her, and I think she was proud of us, and we are proud of everybody in this room that had anything to do with the pensions. And I'd like you to stand up if you had anything to do with the pensions, and let's give you a hand. Everybody. Everybody. Are you, are you ashamed of standing up? We need to acknowledge you. We want to acknowledge everybody in this room. And we have NUCPT members yep. back here that have not oh, stood yeah, up. Guys, <laughs> Come on, yeah. So I just want to say, okay, we're getting we're getting close to time. Okay, so I just want to say that these guys are so important, and um, and also thanks Josh and the PBGC and everybody who worked with us over these years. I'm just noticing you here standing there right now. Um, thank you, everybody. These guys started out as truck drivers and spouses. They became the best activists I know. Now I'm going to bring up, and you guys are going to all stand on the stage because we're about to do a toast pretty soon, but Norman Stein, who is our everything. Where are you, Norman? <clears throat> Norman, Norman is the... Uh, Nor Nor Norman is... Uh, Nor Norman is our, uh, our, our senior... Uh, our, our senior pension and, and legal counsel, but his, his, uh, he does so much more than that. So, Norman, and uh, let's wrap it up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Karen told me not to repeat anything that had been said before, but I, I'm not. <laughs> um, and you guys were really a tough act to follow. Or a tough act to follow. Um, so Karen was what happens when you crossed Don Quixote with a little engine that could. She expanded the realm of the possible. She was a miracle worker who worked to make supposedly impossible things, such as a Butch Lewis Act, happen. I first met Karen 40 years ago when my then boss, Paul Berger, also for a time my pen name, took me to a panel discussion of multi-employer plans where he and Karen were among the panelists. Karen was memorable. She somehow came across on a serious, if not exactly stodgy panel, not only as brilliant and passionate, but as caring and kind. She really believed in what she was doing. She had magic and charisma. I remember then thinking, as a 26-year-old, I want to be like her when I grow up. <laughs> Five years later, after I started teaching law, I sent Karen a draft article on something called pension plan revisions, which the pension Wright Center was working on. Karen called me immediately and asked me if I could fly to Washington the next day to work with the center in its effort to change the law. Um, my wife is sitting here, wasn't very happy about that invitation. <laughs> um, but I began working with Karen and the Pension Rights Center that day and have ever since. To me, Karen was a colleague, a boss, a brilliant writer, an editor, a role model, a teacher, and friend. To quote E.B. White in Charlotte's Web, she was in a class by herself. It is not often that someone comes along who is a true friend and a good writer. Karen, like Charlotte, was both. Um, it's now my pleasure uh, to introduce another of my heroes, um, Dennis Dreeth. Uh, Terry Deneen and I were assigned to the incredible rewarding task of working with Dennis and some of his fellow musicians uh, to prevent MRP, MEPRA benefit cuts to their pensions, and then working with them and others to make legislation happen that would save the pensions of more than a million workers. And during that process, I learned that musical ability seems to run in tandem not only with math, as I'd heard, but also with legal analysis. Indeed, Terry once mentioned that if he had a legal problem, he thought he might turn first to Dennis or Steve Nathan or one of their other colleagues that we had the pleasure of working with before even thinking about going to a lawyer. I concurred. Terry, by the way, for those of you who know him, couldn't be here today, but he asked me to express his greetings. Karen already mentioned a few of Dennis's musical accomplishments and that he, along with the incomparable Ellis Hall, wrote, produced, and recorded with 13 other wonderful musicians tonight's theme song and tribute to Karen, Everyday Hero. 
I don't have the time to list all of Dennis's accomplishments, but my 18-year-old self has to mention that he toured and recorded with the Beach Boys. <laughs> yeah. um, so, Dennis? Dennis? Uh, thank you, Norman. Um, before I go in, I do, I do want to acknowledge a couple of my colleagues here, here tonight. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Thomas F. Lee, uh, President Emeritus of the American Federation of Musicians, and, uh, and Jay Rosen, who's a prominent violinist in Los Angeles, a former board member of Local 47 AFM, uh, officer of the Recording Musicians Association, and a pensioner. So you're probably wondering, why are all these musicians here? What do we have to do with any of this? But you look at the names on, on the list, and I think what you see is just a lot of names in bold that you've never heard of before. And even though we work with a lot of famous people, we're really like the everyday working families uh, in America. We rely on the pension funds for our benefits. When our pension fund was in serious trouble, we were facing literally catastrophic cuts. Uh, the PRS came to, to our, our rescue and were our heroes. And uh, these people were here for us round the clock and did an amazing job for us. So when Karen called me and asked me to do a musical tribute, my only question was, how soon do you need it? And because uh, and, I couldn't possibly say no. <laughs> and nobody can say no to Karen anyway. It's not, you can't, it's not, it's not, not in the cards. Um, and Ellis and I wrote this song, and we put out a call to the musicians. And I will tell you that um, we're asking people who are the A-list musicians in our business, people at the top of the game who are way over scale, working with the best people, to come and work for free and play in this song. And uh, the hardest part was weeding it out because we had more people who wanted to play on it than we could possibly have roles to play. That was an unparalleled response that I've, I've had to this. Uh, I did have a few criteria for it, however. Um, every musician had to, one, be an exemplary musician. Uh, they each had to be receiving their pension and they had to have faced uh, serious cuts of their pension had we not had the, the rescue plan, the Butch Lewis Act. So uh, with that, that's how Everyday Hero came to, to be. So I just want to say thank you. It's, our, it's our, our love letter to the PRS and our thank you to you folks because you've been nothing short of spectacular in our heroes. So thank you very much. So Andrew, do you want to come up? I just want to do a toast. We've said everything that needs to be said. So um, uh, I just want to say to Karen Ferguson and a very long, long life for the Petro Nine Center and all of us. Um, and that's let's t let's toast, and then we're going to start the um, the video. Karen, Here's just Karen, Karen, Karen. 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 And th thank you, everybody, for coming. Really, it is amazing. Kate. Ever shining like the moon or the sun Effervescence here for everyone Vision, inspiration of what can be Through winds of change displaying constantly Connection of a never-ending era tonight Ocean revelation driving the day Wrapped in struggle, trouble fade away Lesson learning from the ones who know All of us contain the hero flow Every day here of the night Journey through time, intuition for your gold design, elevation through the love and force, jubilation now we want the storm. Perseverance and the faith to believe. True persistence when your eyes don't shake. 
ears to listen when the world gets too Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Dennis, and all the musicians who put that together. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to our staff. Thank you to our sponsors, our funders, all of you who came tonight. Um, now you just eat and have fun. We're still here for a while. You can also get do your video down the, the um, hall. And uh, this has been 